So once we've got it this way, one, two, now we need to think about how we go the other way. So we just reverse the process. This is the, one of the ways that we learn organically within each one. If you're conceptually engaging, you should be. It should be a dialectical interaction between kind of intuitive engagement and practical flight training. Think, well, we could do it. We could do it high, we can do it low, we can do it one way. Well, what about doing it the other way? So to begin to do it to do it the other way, we need to learn a new stance to start with. It's exactly the same as before. One half foot out turn. And don't forget, if you've got big feet, you can you can modify it. Um, but instead of having the posture this way, we change, we change, and we have the posture this way. So. From here, we change to here. It's over this shoulder. This hand is now inside this way. Still keeping it relatively tight. I don't want this arm too low because it starts to affect how we can add force. We're not usually in this. It's usually a, a posture that we find ourselves in in the middle of a, a um, in the middle of a combination. But it's a good reference point to start from. Um, Stick is virtually flat over the shoulder, so it's different to this side where it's up this way. All of these things you will just drill in naturally, and as you train, you'll see exactly why they have to be done in this way in order to issue force. Um, the posture for this, 45 degree chop, is like this. It's just like when we did it, did it this way, or when we're starting from this particular start point. And we're chopping. Pushing with this hand to get extra force. It's exactly the same the other way. And it's exactly the same low. So as you can probably guess, from here, now we want to do exactly what we did before, but in reverse, and shot this way. One, two. And you can see that the, the posture is very reminiscent of the kind of structural nature of um, traditional Tao, Shaolin, Chuan, um, even Wudang, using this kind, of, this kind of very structural movement. Somewhere between Shaolin and Wudang, again, another contradiction of each one, structure and flow. Um, so you can see that the, the genealogy of it is specifically from the genius of Chinese worship. It's not some kind of, um, I don't know, like bastardized escrima or something like that. It's a unique and distinct way of thinking about weapons work. It stems directly from the brilliance of Chinese martial arts. Um, one, two. One, two. It's exactly the same if you do it, do it low. So starting from this posture. Now we can start doing things like adding in little steps like moving boundless from our, from our basic posture. Moving forward. Even moving round, changing footwork. It's exactly the same thing. So as we start accessing in the infinite curriculum, we can start thinking about adding in different kinds of footwork. Notice now I'm starting to combine. So I'm using this idea. Uh, it's not the infinite curriculum idea, it's something we call the multiplier effect. So once you learn two or three things, then you can start putting them together into different kinds of combinations. So as you begin to experiment with the, um, the idea of the multiplier effect, you'll soon start to see that there's certain natural kind of flows, and we call them natural flows. Things that flow just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You 
because the stick is one way then it's easily transferable to the other way it's also one of the reasons by the way why we use this it's another reason that i didn't mention that we use this kind of crooked stick work it makes it much easier to transfer you can even do four natural flows with the stick called natural flows because they just flow naturally one into the next So something that you'll notice when I'm doing those, those techniques is um, in some cases I'm going from low back up to high, which is something else that you need to practice. One, just change up. As soon as you get the basic idea, this should just really flow naturally. It doesn't require too much, um, too much extra training. Just think about whichever, whichever stance you're in. Flows up, flows up. And here we have another technique that's really important that we need to learn because you can see this isn't quite hit and stop in the same way. So one, one, if we want to get back up to the top, we have to change, we have to go around with a little bit of a swing. And the technique here isn't just to swing wild like this and then up and over. In reality, in chaos, that will happen. Um, but in terms of training and our technical ability and doing it right in terms of training, hopefully it'll go right. Um, hopefully we'll never need it, we'll just do it because we're interested. But if you have to, hopefully it will go right. One, it's got to go past. And here, instead of swinging, we use the wrist to curtail the, to curtail the, the swing. So this is the best we can do in terms of limiting dead time. So we can't always do exactly what we want in terms of the theory. We've got to make compromises and adaptations. It's, it curtails on the wrist like this, flicks back and then up. So one, two, back up. Um, one, two, nowhere near as good with my right hand as my left hand, and I'm sure everyone exactly the same. So no matter how much I press, the lighter the stick, the better it can be with my right hand, I have to say, but uh, controlling Dragon's toothpick with my right hand is quite hard. Uh, nevertheless, we need to learn it, we need to learn it both ways. One, two, strike. One, curtail, in, strike. Curtail, strike. Curtail, up, strike. So as you're engaging with your training and you practicing these natural flows, what we call natural flows. So you're practicing your natural flows as a critical, engaged, enthusiastic student at each one, you'll start thinking, well, okay, you know, there's a certain logic to that. Even if I've got a, you know, curtail and up for the high ones, nevertheless, there's this flow to it. But what about if you want to do techniques that don't flow in that way, that aren't a natural flow? And natural flows are only a certain percentage of the techniques. Let's say, for example, the simplest example, you want to hit someone and then you want to hit them again in exactly the same way. This is called a chopping strike, this way. Um, you can't, there's no natural flow to it. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. And there's a basic way, which we use sometimes, and there's a sophisticated way. And I'll just introduce this idea at the moment because it's kind of inevitable that a, a really good student will start thinking about this at this point. So this posture we call one, two, we call that a hack, a basic hack, one, two. But there's another technique that we want to learn that's more sophisticated that we call a floating hack. And it's not necessarily that easy to see on camera, but from one, instead of just bringing straight back, so our, our normal hack, our basic hack is just one. Don't bring it all the way back, by the way. There's no need to do that. Just issue force into the second one. Um, just like when you do double jab, you don't need to bring your hand all the way back, just keep it in and use your structure. But in a floating hat, we do something slightly different. We circle it back in this way. One, two. It's not a super powerful technique, I have to say, but um, it's really useful for certain things when you need to engage speed because the problem with a is it's a little bit slow. And if you imagine like you try to hack at someone's hand who's got a knife or something, you want a little bit of extra speed. And the fact that there isn't quite as much power in that floating hack, it doesn't matter because you're whacking someone right on the bones of their hand. 
Um, and there's going to be plenty enough power to break that hand. So one, circle it like that, one. And the routing for this is quite sophisticated. This is a sophisticated technique. This is what we call, um, this is what we call genuine spiral power. I don't think people talk about, but um, when you see the reality, um, as Wang Shang Jai said, it's quite something else. One circle, one. So look at the root. One, two. If you practice like this, it just changes like that from. What I'm doing is changing which way I'm pushing from to support my overall structure. But when it's done fast, pretty much just use the back foot. But my whole body just circles into the. Again, when people talk about whole body power, some of the stuff that they say, they think whole body power is, I just, I can't conceive of why they would think that. It has no practical um, application or demonstration that anyone could show beyond theory. But this kind of thing, you can see it. One, whole body swirls into the, whole body swirls into the floating hat. That's a technique we'll come back to later. So the next technique we need to learn is something that we call a cradle. And it's called that way very simply because we're going to cradle the stick on our arm. And the first, the first one we want to learn, again, from our basic strike, stop at the centre line, the stick pulls in and cradles in our arm this way. And the features, I'll do it again, for those who are just like kinetic learners can just pick it up. Cradles in this way. The features of this, look. There's a groove here, just above this bone on your elbow, or particularly if your sleeves are rolled up like this, against this part of the forearm, so it's against the elbow like that, holding the stick as per, shoulder is relaxed and down as per each one, and this hand is here, it's as close as possible really to the wrist, but it's still touching just about the, is it the nape, the nape of the elbow, the nape of your neck, is it? Crook of the elbow, and it's cradled in tight like this. This is to give the stick some support in a close range scenario. So one of the things I was talking about that you don't see a lot of other stick systems thinking like this. If someone moves onto you like this, you're not swinging at all. You need to be able to start stabbing and poking and levering with the stick and using different techniques that you would normally see in other stick systems. The second feature to know about the, the, the cradle is that relative to my stance, relative to my stance, it's on an angle, so it's not flat this way in line with my in line with my feet. It's on an angle like this, and this also helps to support it. And then when we when we strike in this way, when we strike in this way, it goes on a direct line like that, but on an angle towards the target. No one wants that in their face. Boom, this way. So one this way. Okay, right handed. Striking. And everything here is trying to support the support the overall structure. Hand pretty much in the middle of the forearm. Support the overall structure this way. Of course, if there's going to be some odd energy, it's going to ping off that way. But that's why we want to get it in, get it in on this angle like this towards the towards the opponent's centre line. Too much can go wrong with it this way. It's kind of half horizontal, half half flat, half up this way, and hit in. So once we've got this basic cradle concept and we've worked with it, bringing it from different, different strikes back into the cradle, bringing it into close range, there's a couple of really interesting things. Well, there's, there's numerous really interesting things. We'll start by some, showing some basic ones and introducing some other key concepts. So from our basic cradle like this, the next thing we can do is hit with the butt of the stick this way, just hit in this way. Again, close range and different different angles, and use the butt of the stick as a weapon, a close range weapon. Note that when you do this, when you hit with the stick, you can push in initially to get extra force with this arm. But when the when the contact point hits, the stick is going to come away from your arm like this. It's not going to be supported all the way in. So you need your hands to be completely straight. Um, so that it's supported. In the traditional each one way of punching, the idea that the structure goes from these knuckles, these three knuckles, down the down the bones of the arm. It's exactly the same concept. It's 
pretty much exactly the same posture as an each one backhand hook, if I think, having said that, it is exactly the same posture. And the same idea, this, when you come to hit against an object, you'll see that it's quite hard to hold onto the stick when you do this, it's quite a desperate move. Um, but it's definitely possible to train it, and you want the impact of the stick to go back into the palm like that, not into the thumb. So you're pushing in with this bit of a, this bit of the hand to make sure that that happens when it hits. That's going to take all the force like that. So in that posture, you can see I'll do something slightly different, I'm taking a different variation. I'm hitting first and then I'm bringing it into the cradle as I hit. So rather than hitting, bringing it into the cradle, then hitting, the cradle is forming one, two, as I hit. So now from this very simple posture of the the cradle we've got two techniques one pole cross stab in with the stick this way hit in with the stick this way now if you're here then it's going to occur to you as a um, an engaged enthusiastic each one accessing the infinite curriculum really thinking creatively about the multiplier effects well if i hit here i can hit again i can hit him with the book so this is another really useful um, really useful aspects of the cradle. So we've hit in this way and just straight in, pushing and using this hand, it's short range, using this hand to put all the structure, all the power in there. And the straight in, straight in the face, it's close range again. So that brings us neatly into the, the, the next adaptation of the, of the cradle technique used in this way. Whether we've hit this way into the side or whether we've hit or pushed in, this way, we can do this technique. Uh, we find ourselves there, or it can even be done from, from, from low down this way. Um, one of the things that happens when we see people, and particularly riot police using sticks, one of the things that happens is people don't stop, they keep coming, and people find themselves, even though you've got a stick, someone's like falling on top of you. Um, and very often you can end up in, even though you've got a stick, it not being an advantage because they're just wrestling with you for the stick. Yeah, they're going to feel them bruises later, and if you can keep hitting them, you can win. You can subdue them. Well, there's, a, there's a couple of videos of people who don't look like they're trained at all taking multiple hits from sticks and, and going um, against one person. Um, usually when people are getting proper beaten, you know, you see like a couple of people beating them, um, or they just one person just keeps beating them until they win. But there's plenty of cases where people have been able to take the first initial few hits, and if they can get on you, then you're going to need close range techniques. Again, that's not something you see in other... Well, I've never seen it in other stick, stick fighting systems. I only see it, again, it's the genius of Chinese who shoot to think about these things. Um, from here, from, so we've struck in here and someone collapses in on you. Again, this is one of the reasons that I talked about earlier why we have sticks on an angle. If someone collapses in you and it's just dead straight, it can just get pushed back like that and it's a lot harder to do certain things. If it's on an angle like this and they push in, they're pushing the stick this way, you can go with it and you, you change the use of the stick into a leveraging tool to leverage against them. To push against their, to push against their body like this. Push against their body like this and use it as a leveraging tool. You can even use that if you're, if you're quite, if you're this way, it's low and they're in, you can leverage this way and just use it this way. And if you do a couple of interesting things there, you can grab your own wrist um, in this kind of gable, gable lock that wrestlers use to strengthen the to strengthen the posture, one like this. Then you've got to see where is the stick relative to them. If it's poking past, if it's poking past them, then we need to change to different kinds of techniques. But if it isn't, if it manages to get into them, like that, if it's poking into them, then you can push your release force into the or just push in like this, this brilliant um, 
again genius of wash units it's very often mocked this this way of elbowing like this um do you know that never worked yeah it really really works if people are wrestling against you and you want to get your elbow right in and push and really push and blah, blah, blah. that hurts so much um very similar thing you can put not for long they're going to grab the stick so we need other techniques for that but you can release force this way create a little bit of room so this leverage leveraging the stick this way or this way even downwards a little bit this way back into the back into the foot using again this gable to add power to the and keeping it cradled up this way so the next thing we want to learn is something that I think is probably the coolest thing in all of each one's do the cool the coolest posture um, so what however we've got there one two into the into the cradle position we can use our arm just to flip the flip the stick up and change into the double hand grip the double hand grip whichever hand you're holding the um, grab it underneath with the other with the other hand and um, we learn it both ways so it doesn't matter so much but you get much more use of the the weight of the stick if you do it right from the cradle position flick up change into the the double hand grip and strike and it doesn't matter where you where you're from uh, where you doesn't matter where you're from i'm from stockport doesn't matter where you're from doesn't matter where you're um where you're starting from you can do this Posture, it doesn't matter where you're starting from in terms of the in terms of where the cradle is, you can change and flick it. Flick it up and then it's just a very quick change that um, I just think is super cool. So the last technique we want to learn from the cradle position for now, there's loads and loads of really cool ones as well. We'll get to them all, don't worry. The last one we want to learn, which is um, teaches us something really useful again about chaotic situations. When we want to grab the other end of the stick and use the stick in this kind of grip. So for this kind of grip, this hand is this hand is in its usual position. This hand you want maybe a fist and a half grab down because we want to use this end offensively yes yeah? so we don't want to hold it right at the end even though that will give us more stability although you can change you know if you want to do this into someone's face and you just kind of naturally make your hands a little bit wider um, but it's easy to just go off the end and we want to use that end offensively so um, but what we want what, what we don't want to do is miss it so we've got various techniques that are drawn from traditional washu um, Primarily the one we want to use is what we call a palm drag. The palm drag is something very simple. You can do it either way, you can do it this way, where you drag against the palm. So this this posture in Shaolin Chuan, Shaolin um, Gaoshu, Shaolin Broadsword, where you drag along the palm this way. It's called a palm drag. It can also be done against the body, body drag like this that you, um, you see in like this kind of jam shoe, I'll take out a few lights in there doing that. Um, so you can drag the palm or you can drag the stick past the palm. So in this in this in this instance we're going to drag the stick, drag the stick past the palm this way. We're keeping we're doing it this way because we don't want to miss. We want to we want to make sure that we grab the stick in the moment of chaos. One and we're dragging it out this way because we want this extra distance because what we're going to do next is hit in with the butt of the stick this way. So, however we've got it, however we've got it, there's no limit to the angles that we can do. And from this side, hit low, drag down the palm, flat, or flat in this way. So palm drag, palm drag this way, change, hit him with the butt of the stick. But that's all from the cradle. So now you're starting to see structure moving into flow.
So for this section, we just need one more technique because it kind of flows logically as part of the same um, initial family group of each one short stick techniques. And this is from where we've done this posture where we're leveraging, we're leveraging a body against us, heavy body against us. Um, if you do that, if you, if you can practice on a back by the way, one of the interesting things that you learn is this, we'll talk about it in another video, this very straight on, very straight on each one stance. Um, I'm sure a lot of people say you know, should be on, usually I'm a bit wider than I'm but when you leverage something, you'll see wrestlers do this all the time, they brace in this, because it gives you the strongest line in a particular direction. So you will find yourself doing that as you, as part of the routine, um, because routine is a lot more sophisticated than people think. As you release force, bringing the the back foot into line with the with the stance to to leverage better against the tie because you want to push in a little bit. So even from a wider wider stance, leveraging in this way. But when you find yourself here, one of the things that immediately suggests itself to you is a palm drag. One, two, and in for the in for the hit. This one's a little bit different because we close range and we don't necessarily, you can pull it out, pull it out and go back in. But if you imagine someone's very close to you, you want to take the hand to the end of the stick rather than bringing the end of the stick to the hand. So uh, from this leveraging, palm drag while you move. So let's imagine there's a little bit of space has developed and there's a target there, you can go for it and you change. <laughs> Could be low, could be mid, so from this posture Strike in, and you use the whole body force to strike in this way. Once you've done this, once you've struck in, once you've struck in this way, um, something else that's going to immediately suggest itself to you is the butt of the stick. It's just absolute classic um, police, you know, prisoner control. By no means condoning it, um, but it is effective where you just hit him with the <laughs> butt of the stick this way, release force. Look how short my movement is for the power that I'm generating. I believe I can do it on the back and I'm going to show you how I do it hitting an object. Just short, sharp release of force of you. From there. Just keep hitting. Leverage. Leverage. Just keep hitting in. Until you win. Um, so with leverage, with leverage. Hitting in. So I've arm drive, I've gone to the half end of the stick, so I mean this is gonna happen in reality, you know, you're not gonna quite make the um, we just want a good average. So I'm gonna do mid, then hit in. Right hand, left hand should be able to do it both ways. So that concludes section one, that's all the things that we need to learn um, just to get going. You can take all those ideas. Um, and then you can start adding in different footwork and moving around. You can exponentially um, expand the things that you can do with this, just with this range of techniques. We've got a lot more to show you, and that'll be in the next section.